Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Man, it's your boy, man. I apologize. I'm out in the dark right now. I'm waiting for my ride, but I was going to tune in right now. It's 930, so we got to keep things on time, man. Like I said before, I thank everybody for watching us and supporting us. Movement for Christ with my son, Turner. Um, and we are just thankful and grateful that you guys are tuning in once again. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody that tuned in. We had got a lot of hits off of this, man. So, you know, we just trying to do us, right? We trying to show who God is in, um, in our own lives and everything that we got going on, man. So tonight is my last night, y'all. Um, and uh, ever since I made the last post that I did, I've been getting a lot of uh, feedback, um, a few calls and stuff, you know, um, to try to, uh, I don't want to say correct me, but uh, try to give me uh, different understandings and different ways to think about things. And I thank everybody for their opinion. Um, like I said, I don't have all the answers, but I'm just telling you guys what God has done for me and how I feel. Like I said before, I'm not a doctor, um, and so I can't say that I have all the right answers or anything to that such. Um, but tonight, I really wanted to talk to y'all about, um, I don't know who this is for, and this has really been, like, for me, like, to go and sow a seed. Um, I don't know what church or if you belong to a church or anything like that, if you're going through, like, a financial uh, crisis right now and things just seem like it's going upside down man um i just uh ask you ladies and gentlemen to go out and sow a seed at a church um it doesn't matter how much that seed is um never ever feel like because someone announces something over the pulpit that your seed has to be to that amount um we all don't have it the same we all live differently we all have different incomes so never base yourself on somebody else and what they could give God knows your heart and God knows what you're giving. So if your three dollars might go further than somebody's giving three hundred, I'm telling you, it's been a lot of times where I didn't have it like that, but I still gave. And as soon as I gave, God had made some ways. And before I could even leave out the building, God had blessed me or uh, showed up with that situation and uh, really had his way. So I just uh, ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to go out and sow a seed at a church. Um, and if you really need God to show up and show out, I dare you to go this weekend on this Sunday and go sow a seed somewhere, man, and just tell God, you know, I really need you to do this, and you need to talk to him, man. We don't have to say no big words and all these other things that people say. God is a real simple God, and you can talk to him just like I'm talking to you right now. Um, I got a lot of friends right now that are males that are going through it and trying to provide for their families and stuff, and then a lot of them, it's just a lot going on with them and um i just want to tell y'all bros uh man just get up man this sunday man and sow a seed somewhere man sow a seed so you can have it planted man so your seeds can grow and you can see that tree and you can get that fruit from that tree doc and um i really need y'all men to do that man i know we got a lot of things that we say about churches and the pastor is asking for this the pastor is asking for that man it's not about that man it's not about that it's about you being right and you giving to god and you telling god what you need um i never want to say that uh god is a genie but god is a god that will answer prayers um if you serve him and if you try to live right every day um i'm a true witness that god can take somebody from nothing and turn them into something like my life was really toe up, y'all, like from the flow up, like just doing all kinds of things, hanging out in the streets. And after I got out of church, after I was 15, I started smelling myself, as they say. And, you know, I didn't want to go to church no more. I didn't want to be a part because I was seeing these people outside of church and it was turning me off. And I was saying if they living like that and then they go to church and they different, how am I going to be different? I'm doing the same thing as them. So I got kind of turned away from church and I just thank God that, um, that I had some males around me that pulled me and pulled my coattail and really told me to get back in church. Um, a lot of deaths was happening around me. Um, I was having friends drop like flies. Like I told y'all before, we are um, I'm in Oakland, California, mostly all the time, but I'm in San Francisco, California too, man. And uh, I graduated uh, from Oakland, um, out of school out of Oakland in, um, in 2000. And ever since 2000, I could count, it was at least 130 people that got killed in Oakland, California. That was women and uh, men and children. 
Um, if you count that up, and I told you, every since 2000, there's at least been 140 deaths. That's over at least 1,700 people in one city that has been died off in about 15, 16 years. Um, so, you know, um, I'm just grateful that God covered me when I was being ignorant and I was out there thinking I was this and that, that he covered me. Um, always, I thank God for the prayers of my grandmother and the prayers of the righteous and of his, her friends and stuff praying for me and praying over me and asking God to cover me while I was out there doing what I thought I was supposed to be doing or who I thought I was. Um, like I said before, uh, I'm not going to lie. I had a past. Everybody has a past and I have a past. Um, I'm not proud of that past, but I do take acknowledgement that God had blessed me um, to get out of that, to get out of that lifestyle, to leave certain people alone. And I'm not saying all of them was bad. Uh, I'm just saying that it was just a different season, a different part of my life that God was taking me through that. But I'm just blessed that he kept me throughout all the craziness, all the friends getting killed, all the people that I know in jail, like at least like probably about 38% of the young men that I went to school with are mostly all dead. And 15% of the other ones are in jail. And like, that's, that's a big number if you really think about it, y'all. Like, and those numbers that I gave are mostly the African American young men. Um, the man that I were counting was mostly all the men of all races that was going to school with me. But um, it's been a lot of young African American men around me that's been getting killed. And I have a big tennis shoe box full of, uh, of, 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 of obituaries um, with different people and different cousins. And everybody that I was in a season with, um, I have obituaries for and it's so sad to see some of them didn't even get to see half of the age that I am right now they only got to live to be 15 till about 28 and um, like I said I'm just grateful and blessed man that God really blessed me man through my struggle man through my uh, through all of my doubts through everything that I had going on man I just thank God and I bless him for him really just watching over me y'all it's about to get a little bit dark man i'm walking to the car but i'm still here um but i just thank god for all of that all of that everything he did for me everything that he brought me through but um like i said number one y'all three things i was telling y'all before number one and make sure that y'all sow a seed go to somebody's church and i need y'all to sow a seed and um tell god what you need um, please, ma'am, please, sir, I don't know what y'all going through. And like I said, all of us is going through something, but I need y'all to go sow a seed somewhere and uh, ask God to have his way. Um, always we have a time limit on things, and we think that everything is supposed to happen at our time. And God doesn't work at our time. He works on his time, but he's always on time. So I would like to let y'all know that no matter what the situation is looking like, God is going to have his way and he's going to look out for his children. He always said he would provide. So we don't have to worry about what we're going to eat, what we're going to wear, how we're going to do this, how we're going to do that. God will provide. I'm telling you, I'm a living witness right now. I'm going through some stuff that uh, normal people or some people will break down with and I just thank God that he's given me the strength to hold on with my family and my wife and my kids and the people around me uh, to still be supportive to my friends even though I'm not going through uh, all the great times you know um, but I just thank God for that uh, I see y'all tuning in right now as I said before we won't be able to say hi to anybody because we want to keep it going um, but uh, that was number one everybody um, really to sow a seed um, the next thing I was going to say that we all need to start paying more attention to others. Um, we get out here sometimes and it's always about ourselves, and we always want to be about me, me, me. And, um, I've had a few friends that have passed away, um, this year from suicide and really been people that I felt like that would never, ever be in that situation because they were always, um, the ones that would squash things and get us to where we are talking again and everything. And I really had two friends, real good friends, brothers that I call them, that um, that this year or last year lost their lives um, with uh, suicide and depression. Um, that is something that is very real. Um, 
I know I've dealt with it before in my life. Mostly all of us have in a certain um, aspect. We have dealt with depression and we felt like no one was here. But I just ask everybody to just check up on your family, check up on your friends and, uh, you know, just check up on them and see how they doing, man. You ain't got to have a long conversation or nothing like that. Just check up on them and see how they doing. Um, that goes a far long way when somebody actually knows that you're thinking about them. Um, I used to um, watch a show called Cheers all the time. Everybody that's kind of older know what that is. But it said, uh, the song used to say, um, sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name and they always glad you came. Um, you know, we always want to go where people might not know us all the way, but give us love. Show us some um, uh, good attention. Um, not saying stroking our ego or nothing to that such, but just showing that we care, that we're not just thinking about ourselves. Um, that's one thing that I feel like that I really need to work on with myself um, is really starting to reach back out to my friends and really making sure that they're cool. Um, God has put me to a place now that where I'm stable, um, but I can do more and be more as a friend. And um, I just need to do that to boost up what I'm doing. I just, I, I really need to do that as a friend. So I ask you guys to just check up on a friend, check up on a loved one that you haven't talked to in a while and just make sure that they're okay. Y'all. Um, like I said, a lot of times we are in, um, a state where we feel like it just has to be me, me, me. And I have to take care of me. Um, when you have a guy like we have, he's going to take care of you. Um, you just need to make sure that you take care of the things around you. And we all are held accountable for the things that are around us. Uh, we might not think so, but we are held accountable to make sure that we show love, that we show compassion, that we are genuine to one another. Um, it says that in the book that uh, that we are supposed to love one another. Um, and loving one another doesn't mean that you're in this person's face all the time. Loving one another doesn't mean that uh, that you guys got to be BFF, but um, you just show compassion, y'all. Just show compassion and really, really, really check on each other. We are in a time right now, like I said, right now with a generation um, that is moving fast. Everything is microwaves. They want it fast. Um, when I was growing up, we wanted it fast, but... We knew we had to work for it. And nowadays, you can just do so many things quick and just make make it and uh, be that person. Um, and one thing we need to do, y'all, we need to slow down, man, because we kind of burning ourselves out. Um, I work in ministry, and I've been uh, working with a lot of younger people that are in ministry now, young pastors, evangelists, um, um, praise and worship leaders. Um, ministers, uh, reverence, and um, and um, I, I I see the drive in us. I see the passion in us. But a lot of us, we need to slow down. Um, we need to have a covering. Um, that is something that is very important. Um, a lot of us go out, and I had to learn this myself because I was going out and I was doing different things. Um, I've always had a covering. Um, like I said, I have a spiritual father. I have churches that I attend. I have churches that I work at. So some of these pastors I have a personal relationship with. So I've always asked for covering. But um, at one point, um, I was out there working and I wasn't covered. And uh, a lot of things was happening in my life. A lot of things was happening to my marriage um, because I was out of order. And I was just out there and I was going to this church, that church. Um, it's nothing wrong with working at different churches. Um, long as you have in your spirit a protection over you to where you are not drawing in and being a part of bad things where you're going. Um, a lot of times when you go to churches and I do this all the time, um, I stay in one mind frame and I don't try to really make friends because I never want to make it feel like I'm picking a side or I'm a part of a clique or anything to that such. Um, so 
when I go in, I, I go in professional because I have a job to be done. Now, there is two jobs that are, are being done. Number one is God getting all the praise and him being exalted. Number two is to get the ministry into where they are worshiping and God is being exalted and everybody is on one accord. Those are two different jobs and people need to get that in their head. Um, a lot of times um, we have that... Uh, that we're going in just to do one thing. And there's a lot of different things that we go into when we start working at different churches. Um, and um, I think really that um, when we are going to these different churches, we need to have um, a covering over us um, because a lot of times some of these churches, um, I, I don't want to, so some of, some of these churches, the anointing, um, it's, it, it has to be brought there and it, there is, it, there is worship going on, but sometimes, uh, there's, there's, there's some things in there that you can bring on to yourself, um, that you could be a part of. Um, I'm trying to word myself very, uh, very carefully because I do not want to say anything and be, um, out of order, but I'm just speaking, like I said, um, uh, myself directly but some places that you go you have to have covering uh, because there's a lot of things that that's going on in those churches um and with you not having a covering um sometimes you start bringing those things onto your household um like i said before i was in a few churches where uh i was working and um I wasn't covered and I was just in there working and so many things that was happening at that church was bringing, getting brought into my life. And, um, until I stepped back and I really seen what was going on and I seen the fault in what Leonard was doing and not everybody else and how I was out of order. That's when God start working. Um, and he started making things change there. And, um, uh, and like I said before, when, 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 when we are walking into these places, we have to know that there are other things and the devil does come to church also. So I always hear pastors say that all the time. It is true. He's been going to church. He knows the word better than us. So um, you have to be very, very, very careful um, when we are going to these churches and we are working um, and we are um, trying to make a difference and use our talent um like i said before there's a lot of young men and young women that i see a lot of talent in right now and god is doing some mighty things in their life but sometimes we are in the wrong place and so we are not able to use our gifts to the extent that god wants us to use because we are probably there because of friends or because of there's a certain title or limelight that's being shown so we are there and we are not in order and um, we have to get that in order, young men and young women of God. Um, we have to get some order about ourselves. Um, right now, it is like a division where the older people are fighting with the younger people because they're saying that we don't have any tact to ourselves and that we are not uh, raised to really um, embrace the word and live the word. Um, that is not true. I know a lot of young people that are out right now that are living for God and they're doing God's will. Now, you might not see everything that they're doing. And that's what the problem is. A lot of times people can't see what you're doing in the background. And so they assume things. Um, they assume to think that you are living this type of life or they assume because uh, people are talking about you bad that you are doing this and you are doing that. And they don't see the real covering um, that God has over you. Um, I, I, I see you man and you woman of God that are out there preaching right now and that you are really feeling like you are giving God your all. But I think we are out of order to where we are not giving, um, we are not giving respect to, uh, the people in front of us. Yeah, they have old ways. Yeah, they have old ways of things, and it's probably not the same of what is right now. But if we can take the old and put a little bit more to it, not change it, but put a little more to it so we could grab the people that are in this time, I think we would go really, really far. Um, 
like I said before, I've been working in churches and um, they there have been some churches that I've gone into that I have learned some good things and I have pulled some good things from and I've made some good connections to where um, I feel that right now that I'm blessed because I have those connections and um, I thank God for that um, for them. Um, like I said before, right now I attend and um, I am uh, privileged to work um, at my church in San Francisco, California. Um, if you guys are looking for a church and you are in San Francisco, California, um, you can come and see me at Calvary Hill Community Church at 141 Industrial Boulevard in San Francisco, California, where our pastor is Joseph Bryant Jr. Uh, and where souls are saved and lives are changed and they are changed for the better, y'all. Um, our service is only for an hour, so we get in and we get out, we worship, we let God have his way. The pastor gives a good word, a relevant word for the time, and we are out of there. Um, we have uh, great praise and worship with different praise and worship leaders. We are blessed to have um, five uh, great praise and worship leaders that I, uh, that I get to work with, um, older, uh, older uh, friends of mine that I have that I get to work with there. And um, I just thank God for them and for them pouring into me also um, as older friends and seeing things in me and talking to me, you know, um, really just giving me some things that will help me along in life. Like I said before, um, I don't think I'm too good not to take advice from anybody, but I am very aware and I'm very cautious of who I listen to um, because I have a lot to uh, lose. I am a married man. I am a father. Um and so there's a lot to go with what I'm doing in my life. And so I have to live as such. Um, the last thing um, that I just uh, wanted to tell you guys. So number one, like I said before, is to go sow a seed um, this Sunday. Any church that you can find, go sow a seed. Um, number two, um, young people, we got to get covered. We have to get covered. You have to get a covering, get a pastor. Um, that can cover you, that um, is praying for you, that when you're going to different places, they know where you are so they can pray for you. Um, that's number two. Um, number three, um, like I said before, we have to take some confidence in ourselves um, and not be arrogant, but to take some confidence in ourselves to where we walk up as uh, great men and great women. Um, before, like I said before, um, I have come across a lot of times when I was in, um, my depression, depression, excuse me, stage. Um, I was walking with my head down all the time and listening to everybody. And I was the good boy, um, because everybody felt like they could tell me everything and I would go with what they said. Um, soon as God had gave me a, a little peek of who he wanted me to be and who I am. Um, I think I start getting this title as being some arrogant person, um, or all about myself. Um, and I really had to sit back and I thought about it and I asked God, I was like, you know, some nights I was sitting there crying because I was the heavy set boy that, uh, just did anything that a friend wanted me to do because I wanted to be a part and I wanted to be accepted. Um, and so it was a lot of things that I tolerated from people that wasn't right. Um, and I just really, 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 um, had a tough time. I had a tough time, um, during right before I met my wife, the last five years, the last five years before I met my wife, um, my wife and I, um, have been married for seven years now. And I thank God for that. Hey, next year uh, will be eight years. Um, and we did eight, the number eight in our wedding. Um, and number eight is new beginnings. Um, and so um, I just thank God for where he has brought me now. But I really, really, really want everyone to know, like the side of me, this is really what it is. Uh, this show is about really getting to know the people um, that are in this group and know them personally. Like I am not that type of person. I am not that conceited type of person, but I will not be a part of cliques and I will not be with these people that talk down to others. I will not be the ones that sit back and talk about what should be done and not being a part of what uh, needs to be done. Um, 
a lot of times because I don't want to be a part of cliques. Um, and I, I, I just feel like that is um, a thing that really hits me close because, like I said, I was in a state of mind at one time where I was the heavy set boy and I wasn't a part of no cliques. I wasn't um, able to do everything everybody else did. I have friends that all the girls wanted and everything like that. And I was always the fat boy <laughs> that uh, the girls wanted to tell all the crazy secrets to and stuff that I didn't want to hear. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ. But, um, you know, uh, after I really, really got to know who Leonard was, I had to do some soul searching to really see who Leonard was. Um, I, I had to let some things go. I had to let some friends go. Um, it hurt me bad because I always felt like those were friends, even though I knew that the relationship was toxic. I still kept them because it was something that I knew. Um, when God had did something new with me, with my wife, um, he had took me out of the situation of things that I knew. Um, he had took me to a place where I really didn't know anybody like that and where I didn't know things to, um, around me. Um, I was uncomfortable um, I was scared. I was, um, ready to go back to what I knew because it was so comfortable. Um, but as soon as God took me out of that, uh, light of being around people that really didn't mean me no good, I really started seeing, um, the changes in my life, the way he was blessing me with my own business and helping me um, do the things that I needed to do to be a husband and to be a good husband, excuse me, and to be a good father. Um, he really started showing me things when I got away from everybody else. Um, a lot of times we have people in our lives that want to be in our space. And so they give us this, uh, advice that they feel that we should go by. And I had a lot of men that when I was going through it with my wife, when we first got uh, married with little problems that we would have here and there, nothing really big. And they would tell me, well, if I was you, I would do this and I would do that. And I had to think about it after a while, after I got with myself and I was like, well, that's why that person is never with nobody. That's why you don't have anybody because you do those toxic things to a relationship. You do those toxic things to a relationship and to where you are pouring in bad things into your relationship or to other people's relationship and they're messing up um, what God has put together. I have seen a few marriages um, in the last five years that have um, come to a halt because of toxic things that I've seen other people pour into them. Um, a lot of times I have seen these couples, younger couples, um, have problems, but it could have been things that we talked or they talked through. Um, and, uh, because of the, uh, 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 miserable, miserable and toxic and lonely people that they're hanging around. Um, they are literally, um, uh, feeding poison into these relationships and they're making them to where, they are putting in things that will destroy and eat away at these relationships. Um, there have been a few marriages that I have seen that have went to the wayside that I've been really sad about. Um, and I, as a friend, I'm sad because those are my friends. And I always want to see my friends living good, doing good and being happy. Um, that's why God has uh, women and men here because he made men and he said that men um, was lonely. And so he made a woman. And so that's why um, we need the marriages between um, the man and the woman to go right. But when you have these toxic people that are pouring into these relationships, they are killing it because they are lonely. And a lot of times some of us that are younger feel because they are older than us, um, that they're giving us game or they're telling us the right thing. And you really got to look back and think about it, y'all. Um, as you are seeing these people and they have multiple people that you've seen with um, in a year or they never can't keep somebody in a relationship, I wouldn't listen to those people because obviously their advice is not um, obviously their advice is not um, 
is not working because they don't have somebody, but they want to go and pour these toxic things into uh, these young people life. And um, so I just need um, I need you guys. I'm sorry I went off the topic. I don't know where that just came from, but um, I just need you guys. Uh, any couple right now, um, God just put this on my heart. Any couple that you guys feel like you guys are not making it right now and you can't understand what's going on, man. Keep everybody else out your business and you guys sit down and talk. Um, talking goes a long way. Um, talking can solve some problems. Talking can get some things out. But remember that we are talking to each other, not against each other, not down to each other. We are talking to each other. Um, it is very important that the person that you uh, talk to or lay with or stay with um, always has the best side of you. Um, that was one thing that my pastor has said to us um, during our wedding, um, that always make sure that Jaquilla gets the best of me. And um, a lot of times when we have all these things going on outside, um, we bring them into our household and then we are um, putting confusion and anger and different things in our household um, that we are bringing from outside. Um, so just remember, you guys, we need to talk to each other. Um, a relationship is never always up. They are There are good and bad days. But long as we talk through those days and that we are um, together as a group, we get through it. Um, so many things are flashing in my head right now to say, but I'm trying to stay on topic with what I was supposed to talk about, um, you guys, but, um, I really, really, really need you guys to, uh, just do that. Um, really sit down and just talk to whoever it is that you're in a relationship with. Um, we have to make ourselves. um, available and uh, I don't want to use the word available um, we have to make ourselves to where we are really um, able to listen and to learn uh, we are all here to learn different things that's the part of life to learn different things and to really uh, get the lesson that God is trying to give us in this life um, this is not for nothing. Um, these things will be used in our eternal life. Um, I have no doubt that everything that I go through today, um, God is building me up to be that warrior. So when I do cross over that, I will be that warrior that he has called me to be. Um, I don't know who this is for, but anybody that this is for, um, I just uh, want to pray with you right quick. Lord Jesus, we thank you and we magnify you and we ask that you touch any situation right now, Father God. I feel that it's somebody that is looking right now, Father God, is in the situation that I'm speaking about. And I ask that you have your way, that you let your Holy Spirit, Father God, act up like never before. I need you to change that situation in that household, Father God, in that mind, Father God, that you put them on one accord, Lord Jesus, that you let no man tear down what you have put together. We ask that, Father God, that you let your Holy Spirit Spirit abide in that house, Father God. Let it not just be a house, but let it be a home, Father God. Let it be a place where there is peace, Father God, where there's love, where there's joy, Father God. Do all things, Father God, we give you glory. I ask that you touch the situation of any man or any woman, Father God, that needs you right now, Father God. I bless you and I thank you, Father God, for the anointing that you have put over us. And I thank you, Father God, for the power that you said that we speak it, Father God, and it shall be done. I speak right now, Father God, authority Father God, over everything that the devil is trying to bring down, Father God, and he, that he is trying to do. And I speak increase in the name of Jesus, Father God. I speak favor, Father God, on my people's behalf, Father God, that the situation shall be handled. Rent, Father God, food, Father God, transportation, Father God, relationships, Father God, household, Father God, anything, Father God, that the situation is, Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I bless it and I say it that it is done. In your name, we plead the blood of Jesus, Father God, and I know that you are real because you have done it for me father god have your way in the name of jesus father god and we thank you in jesus precious name lord amen um 
I am uh, I am uh, feeling some type of way. I see that this uh, is not just for everybody else, but this is for me also. Um, through this, um, you are going to get to see different sides and different parts of everybody in our group. Um, the next young lady that we have coming up is my girl, Nia, um, and she's going to be up for this week coming up, y'all, man. And um, I just thank y'all for rocking with the kid, man. Like I said before, um, I'm from Oakland, California. My name is Lue Leonard Johnson II. Um, y'all could reach me, too. Like I said, I do hair, so y'all could reach me, too, under the T-H-E-E -E, Hair King. Uh, I am Mr. Cali's, one of Cali's best, man. You know, rock with your boy. So I thank y'all all for uh, rocking with me once again. I uh, want to tell y'all, if you guys are looking for a church and you're looking for a church on Sunday, I dare you to come out to San Francisco to Calvary Hill Community Church at 141 Industrial, San Francisco, California, um, where po Pastor Joseph Bryant Jr. is our pastor. We start at 10 a.m. on time every Sunday, so I suggest that you get there at 945 for a good seat so you could be close to the pulpit so you could feel the fire. We thank you uh, for rocking with us, my son Turner and Movement for Christ. You have been rocking with your boy. Uh, once again, Mr. Johnson, y'all have a blessed one and take care.